Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome to the live stream. If you guys are watching the live stream, and also, well, Microsoft's Q. I don't think I don't think this is their Q1 though. I think this is their Q3 earnings for. Uh, 2023 because their year ends in June for some reason. Anyways, guys, Microsoft just released their earnings for the Q3 of 2023, and um, they're up a massive, massive amount just because of the fact that well, um, apparently AI has become has become the new dot com. So we're gonna be taking a look at these earnings, and of course, let's take a look at the discounted free cash flow to see if the current share price this is looking like a buy, and uh, well. They're up a significant amount, so probably not. Anyways, let's get started with this. Now, coming over into the earnings, we can see that, unfortunately, this is not updated yet, but you can see that their EPS normalized estimate was $2.23, EPS gap estimate $2.24, revenue estimate of $51 billion, and you can see there was a 29 revisions, all of them to the downside. That's absolutely insane. Now, what's funny about this is that, well, they completely crushed it by a lot. In fact, looking at this, guys, Microsoft non-gap EPS of $2.45 beats by $0.22. Cents. Revenue of $52.86 billion beats by almost $2 billion. That's insane. Can you believe that? That's... Now I'm curious where that money's coming from because... Is it through all the cuts they've been doing and everything like that? I don't, I don't necessarily know, but I mean, um, I mean, just, just looking at these highlights, we got revenue and productivity and business process were up seventeen point five billion, increase of eleven percent. Oh my god, this is intelligent crowd. Intelligent, yeah. I think this is where it mainly occurred right over here. So, yeah, let's actually jump into now their actual earnings report, which is right over here. <laughs> my bad for that. Uh, Okay, so, like always, this is not financial advice, everybody who's watching the video. All of these earnings will be linked in the description below, so if you guys would like to read it, please do your own due diligence. All the calculators that you see in this video, you guys have it for free. Go have at it. So, we got the press release for fiscal year 2023 Q3. Revenue, $52.9 billion, increase of 7%, up 10% on constant currency. Operating income, $22.4 billion, increase of 10%, 15 on constant currency. Net income, $18.3 billion, increase of 9%, up 14% on constant currency. And diluted earnings per share of $2.45, up 10%, which was 14% also an increase in constant currency. Now we got a word from the CEO. Uh, let's... Um, Let's see. The world's most advanced AI models. And there you go. That's the reason why right now <laughs> Microsoft is up a massive amount. In fact, they just touched $300, though. I think they came down a little bit after that. But um, the big AI, the big two letters, AI has become the new dot com. The world's most advanced AI models are coming together with the world's most universal user interface, neutral language to create a new era of computing, Set, uh, said Sataya Nadella, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Microsoft. Uh, across Microsoft Cloud, we are the platform of choice to help customers get the most value out of their digital spend and innovate for this next generation of AI. How many times did they just say AI in that one paragraph? <laughs> Two? <A> lot. Two? <laughs> it said twice. Well, it's similar to NVIDIA, how NVIDIA said 59 times and you oh saw what their God. stock did. Oh my God. All right. Focused execution for our sales teams and partners in this dynamic environment has resulted in Microsoft Cloud revenue of $28.5 billion. Oh my God. That was up 22%. Just their Microsoft Cloud revenue. Just the cloud revenue of 22% and 25 on the constant currency basis year over year, said Amy Hood. This is the, uh, C, uh, the CFO of Microsoft. All right. So um, I want to go into. I want to go into the. I want to go into this. <laughs> this is mainly what I'm going to. I wonder if. Oh, here, here it is, boy. Here it is. Microsoft Cloud Office commercial. Here we go. This is the itemized um, revenue. So where mainly most corp. of the revenue actually came from. Yeah. Uh, but let's actually take a. We we pretty much just saw all of this. We got 2022 reported gap, uh, and then 2023 reported gap. So we got 49. Is this for okay? So I'm assuming that that this 2023 reported it's so far up until the Q3 that they're up to. So yep. yeah. So in 2022 they did a revenue of 40. This is the entirety of 2022, by the way. 
$49.36 billion. In three quarters. Look at this. In three quarters. Not even the whole year yet. In three quarters in 2023, $52.86 billion. They already passed it. <laughs> they already passed yep. it. On the year to date of 7%. Dear Lord. Net um, operating income, it's up 10%. And net income up 9%. That's absolutely crazy, man. That's just absolutely insane. Um, we're looking at now. Actually, we could take a look at the segmented revenue as well. In 2022, look at this. Intelligent Cloud was eight. Well, let's just say 19 billion dollars. So far in 2023, 22.1 billion dollars. That's crazy. Uh, the productivity and business process 15.8 billion to 17.52 billion and the uh, more personal computing so the the pc part that one actually went down look at that it went down nine percent from 14.6 billion to 13.26 billion that's kind of surprising believe it or not are you surprised by that in, in any way because i am or which one refresh my memory sorry so okay so the productivity and business model uh sorry and business process this revenue was up 11 percent the revenue for the intelligent cloud up 16 percent year over year and the personal computing went down from 2022 to 2023 you can see that right that there. actually makes sense because you have a lot of people like you're not especially with inflation and everything you're not spending as much on electronics versus previously right and then with everyone doing the work from home stuff uh, businesses are needing more of that cloud space and the intelligent cloud and everything so logically makes sense now I, again this 2023 is as reported so they this is their q3 2023 so we don't have the full thing for you know 2023 but nonetheless though the fact that both of these are up with only three quarters in yet this one is down it's uh very very interesting to say the least right i mean you know yeah um, let's actually come down here to their uh, three month ended in regards to the selected products and services and constant currency. So, oh, I see. I see. So this is, wait a minute. Uh, okay. So yeah, this is pretty much like all of their products. You can see that Microsoft cloud revenue, uh, percentage change year over year was up 22%. Just the cloud revenue alone. Office products. So like Microsoft office, Microsoft, uh, you know. Uh, what was it called? Office three, as you know, Office three sixty five is right there. But like Microsoft Office, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, thirteen percent. Office three sixty five, fourteen percent. Uh, consumer products and cloud services only up one percent. This is by the way year over year. I did not know that they actually earn. Uh, I didn't know that they own LinkedIn. I honestly did not know that. So that that's okay. That's interesting. LinkedIn up eight percent. Dynamic products and cloud services seventeen percent. Dynamics three sixty five twenty five percent. Server products and cloud services seventeen percent up. Uh, we got the server. Actually, oh, sorry. Azure and other cloud services twenty seven percent. Windows OEM right here, Mike. Are you still there? No. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, Windows OEM down twenty eight percent. Windows commercial product services fourteen percent. Xbox content right because <laughs> I forgot. They also own Xbox up 3% and search and news advertising, including traffic acquisition costs, 10% and devices down 30%. So very, very interesting to say the least, but you can definitely see that the majority of their, yeah, the majority of their revenue is definitely coming from uh, the intelligent cloud by uh, like by a lot. So very, very interesting is, to say the least. What's up? And this is Q3 of yep. last year. So I remember uh, you no, have No, this is Q, no. So is the it? thing, no. So um no microsoft and uh, this is yeah microsoft's year ends in june so their fiscal year ends in june so okay. this yeah so this this quarter that you're seeing right here this april 25th Q1. is technically q1 of the year of the of the of the of the actual year but it's not their fiscal year their fiscal yeah. year is q3 so gotcha. yeah so I, I i noticed that when um is the live stream from yesterday still up? Yes, it is. Uh, and you just answer that. Uh, okay. So with that said, now let's jump into the discounted free cash. Actually, before we move into... Actually, no, no. Let's go into the discounted free cash flow. So we got the ticker for MSFT. You want to read that mar market cap, Mike? <laughs> Two trillion. Jeez. $2.05 trillion. I believe Microsoft was the second company to ever reach a trillion dollar market cap. The first one being yep. Apple, of course. Um, a PE of 30.62. So that's a lot. 
and that's with the current share price of $275.42. Now, um, let's see how much this has changed because, well, uh, if we take a look at Microsoft, we can see that um, they've actually fallen. Wow, look at this, guys. On the intraday, sorry, on, well, yeah, on the intraday, they fell two and a quarter of a percent post market after these earnings came out up 8.68%. And the thing about that is, is that this was up to $300. <laughs> like the current price post market is $299. A few minutes ago, I believe, even before we started the live stream, this thing was a 300 smackaroos. It's actually at 300 still. It, I'm looking at the, okay, well, I mean, you're looking at the. Uh, trading live, view, cool. so yeah, yeah, you're looking at the live. So I'm just looking at seeking alpha. So there you go, up 8.78 percent. Now this is up on the one year 0.37 percent. Very rare because most companies are actually not up on the one year. Year to date, they're up a whopping 15 percent. Yep, <laughs> that's insane. 52 and that's, not taking, and that's not taking account with the live um, prices. So it's actually right. even more. Yeah, it's actually a lot more than that. It's probably like around like 15. Actually, it's, it's probably close. I would argue even maybe 16% now. 52 week range is $213.43 to 294. This 294 is incorrect because obviously we are much higher than that right now. Now, here's something that I definitely have to point out is that we did see this uh, last quarter in Q4. Well, reported Q4, Q1 in reality. It's always difficult to say. Um, they were actually up a lot as well. And then when their earnings, no, not when, when the press, no, when their call, when their uh, presentation call released, I think that's the way you say it. Um, earnings call. When the earnings call, th th there you go. When the earnings call released, they fell from like 12% down to like negative five or something like that. Like in the span of just a couple minutes. So I don't know if their earnings call already happened, but I mean, maybe it did because it was up a lot more than 8.81%. So yeah. Uh, that's just, it is what that is. Now, coming back into the, actually, let's jump into now this, uh, th this article because Microsoft shares rise 5%. This just came out, you know, at 4.32 PM. So right as soon as the earnings came out, you can see that 5% shares, <laughs> Microsoft gained 5% in, in just because of the fact that they're saying AI, which again, it refers to my initial, initial concept of AI has become the new dot com. So I personally don't care about AI and uh, the fact that this is gaining this much traffic because of AI was mentioned, it doesn't really, it doesn't really get me excited at all. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this, um, this article from, uh, from, from Seeking Alpha. So let's actually come now back into the discount and free cash flow. We got an annual dividend of $2.72. Based off of this dividend, guys, let's actually come over here. We can see that. This doesn't even get to 1%. And probably right now it's lower than even 0.9%. Uh, sorry, 0.97% because the price has gone up. Payout ratio is 28.51. A five year CAGR of almost 10%, 18 consecutive years. Not a dividend aristocrat, but they're getting there. X dividend date is actually coming up on May 17th. Payout date will be on June 8th, and they pay their dividends quarterly. Based off of this $2.72, we can see that off of their current shares outstanding, guys, they pay out a whopping. 20.26 billion dollars in dividends every single year now you're looking at this and you're like oh my god that free cash flow they have like nothing left actually after this is paid in their five-year average free cash flow they still have a whopping 32.62 billion dollars in their average that's their average by the way and after their, their last year's free cash flow is even higher 39.5 let's just face it 39.4 billion dollars these payout ratios don't even get to 40 <laughs> which is ridiculous the fact that they pay out this much uh dividends and they and they don't even touch 40 percent it's crazy 34 per percent for the last three cash flows payout ratio and 38.31 percent for the five-year average guys not only can they afford this dividend but they can continue to increase it if they so wish to do so which is just absolutely crazy and with that said, let's jump now into the fundamentals. We got the net income, $39.24 billion to one year ago of $67.45 billion. Uh, that's an increase of 72%. What do you think of this net income, Mike? I think it's consistently growing and it's showing a trend up. So very good. Notice how one year ago it did a slight dip though. That's my one concern yeah. when it comes to this. Um, but 
you know, I personally, you know, so far this year, they're beating records. They really, really are. So, what do you want to give this a grade? I'm going to say 95 just because I was literally thinking earning. the same number. I was literally thinking the exact same number. 95%. We got now the free cash flow. Cash operations, less your capital expenditures. This, guys, it is king when it comes to the profit metrics. This is what companies use to pay out that sweet dividend that we all like. This is what companies use to buy back shares, which we really like, and uh, pay down debts, you know, uh, make acquisitions. The acquisition that, that Microsoft is doing, or at least trying to do, with um, what's, the, what's the company? Activision? Activision. All of that is using the free cash flow. So really, really important. We got five years ago of $39.26 billion to one year ago of $59.62 billion, increase of 56% with an average of $52.88 billion. What do you think of this once again? Same story, 95. 95, I'm gonna say the exact same thing. Absolutely love. By the way, to anybody who doesn't know, I absolutely love Microsoft. I really, really do. Looking now at the revenue. This one is uh, perfection. <laughs> This one is perfection. We got five years ago of $125.8 billion to one year ago of almost $204.1 billion, increase of 62.2%. Great. I'm going to say 100 just yeah. because that most recent. Yeah, it, it's there's no major outliers consistently increasing every single year. I mean, it's, it's 100% for me. Assets minus liabilities, we can see that this one is absolutely incredible. I mean, when the line, when the... <laughs> When the, when the trend line touches pretty much every single graph here, that's telling you that this is this is a gold mine right here, man. Every single year consistently increasing, not missing a beat. I mean, yeah. Average total assets, it is $330.21 billion. Average liabilities, it is $188 billion. Doing this difference, we get $142.46 billion. I'm going to take it from here, Mike. Uh, we got 100% on this one, <laughs> right? I don't think Pretty you're, much. I don't think there's much, nope, uh, no disagreement there. Fight when it comes to that one. Now, this one's interesting. Cash flow minus the liabilities. Their cash flow is increasing and their, li and their assets minus liabilities is also pretty, well, it's, it's perfect essentially. Yet, take a look at this. Cash flow minus the liabilities. We got a little bit going down here and there, right? But during COVID, they actually brought this up a little bit. Uh, going to a negative $127 billion and keeping it roughly the same two years ago. So a year after COVID. And then bringing it back down to uh, negative 138, similar to what it was uh, four and, uh, sorry, five and four years ago. But I would actually argue that, look at this, it's actually lower or higher, sorry, than that of the four-year goal value where four years ago it was 138.9 and one year ago was 138.68 so you know this is unfortunately higher than the average of negative 133.8 billion so what would you give this as a grade just um yeah what would you give this as a grade considering it's 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 a growth company it's not really meant to like is it a know, growth company though to me to me it is just because microsoft just continuously reinvests in itself microsoft is amazing so, when it comes to that yeah so that, I don't like it being so negative, but I, I don't think it's atrocious considering the how the company is set up. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say like 75 percent. Again, you want to you want to isolate everything else. Just look at the graph. Right. Just look at the graph. For the graph, it looks crappy, but it's uptrending up. So it's like eh, 50, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I would have said like a 55. So yeah, I would I would argue with, with a 50%. Looking now at the shares outstanding. This one it is, again, the silent killer when it comes to investing, to anybody who doesn't know. And uh, well, we got here five years ago of 7.67 billion shares to today of 7.4 billion shares. That is a decrease, it's a tiny decrease of 3%. And from the previous year to the current year is a decrease of less than a quarter of a percent. Now, what do you think about this graph? Uh, it's showing progress. There's remember Microsoft and growth company and everything, and you're decreasing so seventy. Just so, because. So okay. So here's the thing, right? I'm okay with seventy, except that this is very consistent. <laughs> so what would you put it higher? I would, yeah. I mean, I would personally put this as like a hundred percent, essentially, because it's and not it's not just about the rate, right? It's not just about the rate. It's, it's about the consistency. consistency. And gotcha. they've been very consistent. I mean, that graph, that, that line is touching these graphs pretty much every single time. So 
I'm gonna put this as 100%. I'm gonna veto your grade. So, uh -huh. lastly, <laughs> lastly, we got the cash equivalents. They currently hold uh, $15.65 billion, an average of $17.45 billion. Looking now at the overall grades, guys, given the income of 95%, free cash on 95%, revenue 100%, asset minus liabilities 100%, cash on minus liabilities 50%, shares of standing 100%. I mean, there's a reason why I like this company. <laughs> I mean, right? There's definitely a reason why I absolutely adore this company. 93%. There's nothing else to say here. So, Let's figure out if the current share price this is looking like a buy. Now, obviously, with that kind of PE, I would, I would, I would say no. But let's still entertain this, and I'm gonna have you input all of these numbers. So, we got over here the current price of 275, which is probably 300 now. But what would you say for the revenue growth? Looking at the growth on Seek Alpha, the forward one, 11.44. And on top of that, the press release saying that the revenue grew 7% year over year. So how would you give this knowing 7% as well as Seeking Alpha saying 11.4? Give me low, medium, I'm high. I'm going to say 8% for the low. 8? 10 and 12. 10 and 12. All right, great. Honestly, I would give it, give it pretty much the same thing. And now uh, for the shares of standing. What do you think? Uh, uh, they've been very consistently buying back. So base case, let's say for the low, like uh, negative, sorry, buying back 2%. 2%. Okay. Let me guess. Two, three, four. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Two, three, four. Yeah. I was, I, I usually, when, um, I like to put the median as like what they're doing, if it's reasonable. So with this guys and the requirement of return of 10%, now, just seeing for debt, we got $116.38 to $135.66. So, yeah, it needs to fall just based off of not adjusting for debt. However, take a look at this. Adjusting for debt, $235, essentially, to $273. Now, if you bought this thing, if you bought this thing prior to, you know, prior to the almost 9% increase, now above $300, apparently, uh, yep. this would have been a very decent buy. In accordance to the highest assumption that he made, uh, revenue growth of 12% and a 4% projected share buyback in the next five years. However, though, um, I think personally right now for me, even $273 is way out of the picture with, the, with this $300 price tag. So it is what it is. Now, with the margin of safety of 5, 10, 15, this is around $200 to $259. So yeah, I mean, it's expensive. It wasn't expensive as of a couple hours ago, but apparently AI is the new .com, so it's expensive. There you go. I personally will not buy this thing at around this point. Um, thoughts? My price target is down in sub uh, 200, so sub you know where I'm staying. All right. All right. So I guess with that now, let's jump into the technical analysis for Mike. So basically, it's pretty simple. Clear cut with Microsoft. Uh, if we go into the... We're going to go to the four hours so you guys can actually see it. You basically are plowing right into the reversal zone. So on Lux Algo, these are zones that basically they show areas where you don't necessarily want to buy the company. And you're steadily heading towards where if we estimate the tip when the day opens tomorrow, 299, 300, right at 300 is an area where you're going to want to basically possibly sell. You have the price targeting area sitting in that area. Now, that's not to say Microsoft can't curl up further. You have the MACD probably going to run straight up. However, I've seen this happen before. Microsoft would have to make extremely new highs just because the MACD at this point right here. Well, what? why do I mean that? If the MACD pushes up, which hypothetically it's going to do, you're going to have a big push on the MACD depending where it lands on the chart, if it does not go above 5.48 here, you're gonna create what is called a MACD divergence, where price goes up, MACD is going down. Usually those things result in the third pullback being the big sell off to the downside. And seeing that combined with everything, I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft gaps up tomorrow on open, which is gonna gap up, it's sending at $300, it's gonna open a big gap from 275 to 300. And I could see it coming to fill the gap all the way at least to the 290 point, especially because people are going to be wanting to take profits. They've held the company long enough. On top of you are in an area that you had the previous, this was actually Jackson Hole speech by Jerome Powell that had that big sell off generated. 
when the market was chugging up. So you have a lot of sellers located in this area, primarily in the $310 region. So that's what I'm saying. I, I do see Microsoft possibly pushing to 310 and then kind of getting a rejection off that point, forming that MACD divergence and basically just, if you didn't get into it now, and you want to get in, wait for that pullback. It's most likely going to come because I really, really doubt that you're going to have a MACD overcome this point right here at five point that you're talking about. To, we generated a roughly, if we just estimate what that percentage push was on Microsoft, that was approximately a 15% push. So from the current share price to, let's say, estimating 15%, you're looking this thing would have to push up to the $320 region to possibly even outpeak this and you know it's a momentum stock depending on how it's trading the volume all these things come into factor so it's pretty much most likely going to have a pullback on top of the other thing that I'm actually going to discuss in the weekend deep dive is that you have eight companies holding up an entire tech sector while everything else is basically being very um laggy as we can call it and that's fine and dandy until it's no longer so you don't want one company propping up the whole market which microsoft is definitely going to push on the market it's definitely going to cause the futures right now are up nearly a percent on the, the nasdaq but i don't see necessarily this area holding i think there's a lot of sellers in this region i think 310 is a it's an easy push if the bulls want to push it up there However, be cautious for the gap fill and you have a pretty massive gap, especially coming back down to the 290s at least. And that's where you're going to find price structure. And what I really don't like is when you fill a gap on the chart, which is sitting at that 296 to the 292 region, which you really didn't have a lot of price action. You kind of shot right through it. So coming back down, it definitely has the capability to really send through that price zone really 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 quick on the week you can see that you're currently above this previous price action zone that you got rejected off of macd crossed bearish and basically if you if you push up the first resistance is at 307 most likely that 315 is really going to catch you on top of you being a weekly zone reversal zone price target on the weekly rsi will be probably super overbought especially right now it's most likely on the four hour if we go to it real quick you can see the rsi is trying to get back up to that overbought stage so we definitely have to be cautious there so overall message of microsoft is it had an amazing earnings if you weren't in it then i wouldn't be necessarily trying to play the upside now i wouldn't performance chase and fomo in i will wait for that pullback to happen especially with if the broader market doesn't keep pushing eventually people are going to be profit taking and then can generate more selling pressure so with that guys that concludes the microsoft section all right <clears throat> all right so i mean I'm, I'm pretty certain that we can uh pretty much just say that uh this is a company that if it does fall down you know a significant amount uh you would essentially just um sell a kidney for right <laughs> this is this is a, a selling of a kidney of a company right Here's the problem I have with Microsoft, and it's it's not because it's the big, it's the, one of the big ones that has the susceptibility to the whole market. Mm -hmm. And it's not like some of these companies like, you know, Pepsi, Chevron, that kind of just trade in their own little sphere that really don't get affected by the S&P and Dow Jones and all that. But Microsoft's in the Dow Jones, Microsoft and NASDAQ and S&P. And it's the second biggest weighting of S&P. If the index turns down, I definitely see it being pulled down with it. Even though it has really good uh, fundamentals and everything, it's not immune to that pull down. But at the end of the day, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And this company's cash flow, it is looking mwah, chef's kiss. So I think that's pretty much going to end it for this video, everybody. Not the live stream. No, don't, don't let everybody go anywhere on the live stream. Uh, we're pretty much going to end it for the video. So... Thank you for watching. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. And with that said, peace out. Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another stock analysis video. You guys probably already saw. Actually, yeah, I'm probably just gonna make all of this one video. So if you guys are watching this in like one long, long format, then you know so be it. But regardless, um, 
We're gonna cover guys, now the company Google. They did have earnings pretty much aftermarket just like Alpha, uh, just like Microsoft and um, they crushed it as well. They really did crush it. So let's take a look at these fundamentals, earnings and then technical analysis to see if the current share price is looking like a buy. So let's get started with this. Now, first things first, Alpha begins 4% as it beats on top and bottom lines, boosts buyback, big one right there. That is an absolute big one because they're buying back shares. And I love the fact that they're buying back shares. We got Alphabet stock rose after hours Tuesday, almost 4% in the immediate wake of its first quarter earnings as the company cleared Wall Street expectations, top and bottom lines, and announced an increased buyback. Absolutely love it. I wonder how much they're actually buying back though. I guess we'll have to read the earnings for that. Anyways, looking at their earnings, uh, it's not updated, but you can see that they were pretty much estimated at $1.07 for both EPS non-gap and EPS gap, and revenue of 60, almost $69 billion. There were actually a lot of revisions to the downside, which was, again, kind of kind of weird, because I mean, it's, it's Google, for, for Christ's sake. So that's very, very interesting, to say the least. But nonetheless, there, uh, here it is. EPS gap of $1.17 beats by 10 cents, revenue of $69.79 billion, beats by almost a billion dollars, $950 million. I wonder if here they mentioned the buybacks though. Uh, I don't believe so. But um, anyways, yeah, they pretty much just beat on earnings by a pretty big amount, especially that revenue. So I guess now let's come into their actual earnings summary, for, uh, or at least, sorry, their earnings result, their, their press release essentially. We got the CEO's comment, Sundar Pichai. I, I love that name. Uh, we are pleased with our business performance in the first quarter with search, uh, with search performing well and momentum in cloud. We introduce important products updates and anchored in deep computer science and AI. There's the big name. If you guys saw the Microsoft one, you know AI has become the new dot com. So our North Star is providing the most helpful answers for our users and we see huge huge opportunities every single time i see that word i have to say it like that uh huge opportunities ahead continuing our long track record of innovation ruth uh, ruth porat cfo resilience in search and momentum in cloud resulted in q1 consolidated revenues of 69.8 billion dollars up three percent year over year or six percent in constant currency we remain committed to delivering long-term growth and creating capacity to invest in our most compelling growth areas by re-engineering our cost base we got the financial highlights. First quarter, $2.6 billion in charge-related reductions. And oh, Mike? Yep. Are you, are you, are you seeing this right here? Yep. $2.6 billion in charge-related reductions in our workforce. So that's how much they're saving in, uh, in, in, in laying off people. Wow. Yep. That's a lot. A $988 million reduction in depreciation expenses. All right, whatever. A shift in the timing of our annual employee stock-based compensation awards resulting in uh, relatively less stock-based compensation expenses recognized in the first quarter compared to the remaining quarters of last year. The shift the shift in timing itself will not affect the amount of stock-based compensation expenses over the full fiscal year of 2023. All right. We got the revenues. Look at this. So, oh boy. We got 2022 on the left, 2023 on the right. And again, this is only Q1 of 2023. And uh, oh yeah, and uh, this is also, uh, I believe this is also Q1 of 2022. So this is not the entire year of 2022. So we got revenues of $68 billion in Q1 of 2022 to Q1 of 2023, 69.8 billion. So they're already beating that by a billion dollars. That's that's pretty impressive. Um, looking at the operating income, 20.1 billion to 17 billion so unfortunately that's a little bit down but only by around what three billion dollars or so uh we got the net income 16.44 billion dollars compared to 15 so that's a little bit down as well and the diluted eps of a dollar 17 compared to a dollar 23 in 2022 so the revenue is increasing but everything else is pretty much actually on the downside uh let's take a look at this itemized we got google search and other uh, Forty billion dollars in 2023 compared to 39.6. YouTube ads. Uh, that explains a lot. <laughs> Worried about the N NLST lawsuit against Google. I'm not aware about the NLST lawsuit, Mike. Can you take a look at that? Sure, but any, but overall, any lawsuit against any company gets priced in usually the day it's announced, and then uh, as it manifests, if it doesn't manifest into 
basically anything. And remember, with it's corporate Google. lawsuits, they take years. Also, it's Google, right? Yeah, they have enough money to drag you through court to the next decade. Yeah, so I'm not really, I'm not really too, um, too, uh, too worried about that. Um, so I just looked up the NLST lawsuit, and it's. Uh, Unfortunately, I require, uh, yeah, if, if you could take a look at that, Mike, that, that'd be great. Yep. Yep, thank you. Uh, we got the Google uh, network. We got, uh, what is that? A, a decrease as well by around a billion dollars. Google advertising, uh, roughly the same at 54.6 to 54.5, so roughly the same. And you can pretty much just see that, well, total. Um, you can pretty much just see that total. It's uh, 69 billion. Total revenue, sorry, 69 billion, uh, 69 point eight billion dollars as opposed to 68. So again, an increase of uh, you know one billion dollars. Also, I am uh, I'm so terribly sorry. 2.6 billion dollars in charges related to reductions in our workforce. Yet, if we take a look at this, we can see that the number of employees have actually gone up 193.6. Uh, I think that's thousand. I'm pretty certain that's thousand and uh, 190 thousand employees i'm pretty sure that's, that, that there's no way that that's billion i mean there, there isn't enough people on the planet but um yeah that's 164 thousand employees in 2022 compared to 190 so i don't think that they're cutting employees though um yeah As just a to, uh, what's up just to answer tony uh, tony's question about um the lawsuit it actually occurred it started in 2022 mid 2022 so any effect you would have on the stock or the company or the perceived value oh, of the that's... stock basically is priced in at this point it yeah. really is a nothing burger yeah i yeah a anything that's priced in by like a, a year ago it's, it's pretty much just done um what do you think of this though because the number of employees has actually gone up yet as of March 31st, 2023, the number of employees includes almost all the employees affected by, by the reduction of our workforce. So they are reducing it, yet it's up from a year ago. Hmm. Interesting. Like, I'm, I'm not reading this wrong, right? I mean, 2022, no, no, no. 22, 23. first quarter to 191, you know, thousand. So I don't, I'm not fully sure. So, all right. I, I guess they are cutting employees. Maybe they had a lot more. Dude. Maybe they grew pretty big and now they're reducing their staff. Right, because, 290. Like, you know, they opened deep mind and everything. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I, th I think so too. Uh, and that, uh, what I want to take a look at though is the share repurchases. So let's, uh, let's see, repurchase, stock purchases, stock repurchases. On April 29th, on April 29th, on April 19, 2023, the board of directors of Alpha authorized the company to repurchase up an additional $70 billion of its Class A and Class C shares in a manner deemed in the best interest of the company and its stockholders, taking into account the economic cost and prevailing market conditions, including the relative trading prices and volumes of Class A and Class C. The repurchases are expected to be executed from the time, wait, from time to time, okay, so not one fell swoop, so they're pretty much just saying, when the when the stock falls, we're gonna buy it. <laughs> That's what we're, we're not gonna overpay for this thing. We're gonna buy it when it falls. Subject to general business and market conditions, there it is, and other investment opportunities throughout uh, through open market purchase and privately negotiated transactions, including the Rule 10B5-1 plan. So, okay, awesome. So, guys, if you own Google, congratulations, you're getting your stock price already getting buoyed up just by the fact that they're buying at 70 billion dollars. So that's really really good to see. Now, let's come into the discounted free cash flow. We got the ticker symbol for Google. Uh, sorry, we got the, the ticker symbol for G-O-O-G. -O -O also another one, G-O-O-G-L. It's pretty much the exact same thing. There really is no difference between them. Market cap of $1.3 trillion, a P of 22.95 with a current share price of $104.65. Looking at this price, guys, we can see on the intraday they were down 2.03%. Yet, aftermarket, they have risen 1.15%. So, I mean, I started with this article, Google gains 4%, yet right now, they are pretty much just down to 1.15. So, they've come down a little bit. Nonetheless, though, it's still really, really solid growth. Looking now at the one year, they're down 15.12%. Year to date, they're up a whopping 16.62. And 52-week range is interesting because just a few months ago, this thing was... Get, almost about to be sub 80 and uh 52 week low is 83 dollars and 45 cents 52 week high 123 dollars and 26 cents in fact i want to see uh when was this 52 week low at and we can pretty much just see it was in november 3rd 2022 so just last year and it was sub 90 there for a little bit um 
if not sub 90 just like just touching 90 for a little bit but as of right now guys you can see that it has gone up to a decent amount you know, above 100 dollars they don't pay out the dividend so this company is strictly growth oriented which means that all of this free cash flow which is massive five-year average free cash was 44.7 billion dollars and last year's free cash was even more 60 billion dollars all of that's going to is gobbling that up absolutely insane so what do you think about those free cash flows pretty awesome awesome looking now at the fundamentals we got the net income 30.74 billion dollars to one year ago of 59 point last to say 60 billion dollars increase of 95 percent what do you think about this net income pretty damn good especially because you're turning up you had the one outlier two years ago but you know that's coming out of covid so right you know, you can attribute a lot of stuff to that. It's consistently increasing, I just, and then you have. I just even even though it's consistently increasing, I don't like the jump from three to one year. Ignoring the outlier, I don't like the forty billion to sixty billion increase. I don't like that. That's sure. twenty billion dollar increase. That's a lot. What was the revenue this quarter? Well, we're gonna get to. The, oh, uh, uh, the revenue this quarter was. Um. Uh, sixty nine point eight billion. All right, so going back to the chart. Well, this is their net income, not not their revenue. Oh, sorry. My bad. Their um, net income this quarter was uh, 15.5. Uh, sorry, 15.1. 15.1 billion right there. All right. So. Ooh. Yeah. That's a big drop. Well, so remember, this is the entire year, though. There's only one quarter uh, in. Okay. Remember gotcha. that. There's only one quarter right. in. You can't, yeah. So... so I'm going to say like 80 because it is increasing. I just don't like the jaggedness. Yeah, I would give it an 80 as well. I'll give it an 80 as well. All right. Um, now let's jump into the free cash flow. We know they have a lot of free cash flow. And uh, five years ago, it was $22.8 billion. As a, and one year ago, it was just $60 billion. Increase of 163%. An average of $44.73 billion, as we saw. Great. What do you think about this graph? Uh, same story, 80. Same story, I 80. I don't like I don't like the jaggedness from yeah, three to it's, one. It's mainly this. It's mainly that, right? It's mainly that. Though the drop from two to one is lower here than in the net income. So, yeah. But I, I agree with you. 80%. I agree with you as well. Looking now at the revenue five years ago of $137 billion to one year ago of $282.84 billion. Increase of 106.72%. This graph looks pretty good. Yeah. 95. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a reason why? Uh, main the three to two. Yeah. 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 Or we you're starting to curve. You're starting and, to and go also, exponential. And also we're seeing that as well here as here too, right? So. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And uh, assets minus liabilities. This thing has been consistently in the positive, consistently increasing. Now, the reason why this what, this today, this current year is the same as one year ago is because it's not updated. So, you know, don't think of this as the same because it's not. So average total assets, it is 337.1 billion. Average liabilities doesn't even get to 100 billion. That's crazy. That's crazy. Their liabilities don't even get to 100 billion. Wow. Average assets minus average liabilities, we get 237. That's the 100. <laughs> yeah, it's 100. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Cash flow minus liabilities. Well, uh, we can see a couple instances of them actually increasing it. Uh, well, actually, there's only one instance of them increasing. I don't know why I said a couple, but um, it mainly happened two years ago. So, you know, they did have that massive outlier two years ago when it comes to their, well, pretty much all their profit metrics. So, nonetheless, though, unfortunately, as of one year ago, they're still under their average of negative $44 billion. So what would you give this as a grade? Uh, about a 65. Mm, that's a little bit too high for my liking. You think 50? Um, think about it. They've been consistently decreasing from five to three. They brought it up right after COVID, but then they brought it back down. Yeah, okay, it's better than three years ago, but it's still, you know, even lower than that of three, of, of four and five years ago. So, I and would the trend is down. And so, the trend yeah. is overall down, down, right? Yeah. So, I would personally give this like a 45. That's just me. Fair oh, enough. Open that up by mistake. Sorry. Uh, 40, I would give this like a 45. Maybe a 40. I guess you could argue a 40 as well, but I would say 45. And uh, shares of standing. Uh-huh. This graph looks even better than the Microsoft one. Yeah, we got 100. Yeah, we got five years ago of 13.9 uh, billion to today of 12.85 billion. 
decrease of 7.63% on the five year and almost 3% on the previous to the current year. I mean, this is a complete 100%. This is just absolutely perfect in my personal opinion. And lastly, has to equivalent to the currently hold $22 billion with an average of $21.1 billion. Looking at the overall grades, we give the net income an 80%, free cash flow 80%, revenue 95%, assets minus liabilities 100%, cash flow minus liabilities 45%, shares outstanding of 100%, overall grade of 85 I mean, I see it. They have a little jaggedness here and there when it comes to the profit metrics, but aside from that, it's still overall solid of a company. But here's the thing. Is this the price that we buy it at above 100? Well, let's find that out because uh, we did have the opportunity not too long ago to buy this thing sub 100 and buy a lot. So let's take a look at this, Mike. So what are you going to give me for the revenue? Let's take a look at the growth. We got 9% for the forward and uh, year over year, when it comes to their earnings, it is around 3%. That's a pretty big difference. Yeah. So... What are you gonna give me? So three growth. six nine. Three six nine. All right, three. Yep. Six and nine percent. And the predicted share buyback. So do they consistently buy back shares? Oh or yeah. Are... Oh yeah. And again, they just announced another seventy billion dollars of share buybacks. So. Yep. So yeah, hmm. remember seven, almost eight percent, with another again seventy billion dollars of share buybacks. So. Damn. So let's do. Five, seven, nine. Five, seven, and nine percent. And uh, well, actually, this is looking like great news. This is looking like great news. Not adjusting for debt, guys. We got ninety-five dollars and fifty cents, all the way up to one hundred and twenty-two dollars and twenty-one cents. Adjusting for debt, they have little to no debt. I mean, let's just face it. This thing has little to no debt. One hundred and ninety-two dollars and seventy-eight cents to two hundred and let's just say it, let's just say two hundred and fifty with a margin of safety of five ten and fifteen. This is one hundred and sixty-three dollars and eighty-six cents to two hundred and thirty-four dollars. Pretty much, if you would have bought this thing when it was sub ninety or really close to being sub eighty, you would have just been sitting pretty at this point because that's oh. fitting every single one of these things. Now today at one hundred and four, it's only missing one, but. Lowest assumption though, I don't, I personally think Google will do 6%. I personally do think Google can do 6% in a, remember, this is in, a, in the next five years together. This isn't in just one year and one quarter. This is an overall average five years, 6%. I think that's more than doable, right? So oh, yeah, definitely. $108, we're currently at 104. This is looking like an all out buy at this moment. Obviously, this does not mean that you go out and buy it. Like we always say in every single video, please do not. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And, um, you know, we do not, we have all these calculators available for free for that reason. Use them, see what numbers you get, and make your own due diligence. And even, guys, read the earnings report because. Uh, you know, all of these earnings report, I will link them in the description below for the video. And um, please read them for yourselves. Make your own financial decisions. Do not follow me or anybody else on YouTube that says, we think that this company is doing good because at the end of the day is they think. So it's not reality. I mean, yeah. So with that said, let's jump over now to Mike and see what the technicals look like. So Google as of right now is at $106.38, basically wiping out the day's losses almost. It opened at the price of 106.61, so you know, basically equivalent to where we are now. So looking at Google, you are in this area of consolidation, and I as basically mentioned last week that we've been in this area of consolidation on the market and Google, so you're basically looking to coil to possibly wind and break out. MACD is as flat as you could possibly be, so they got a 50-50% chance of breaking up or breaking down. And also, seeing how Microsoft reported, you have the NASDAQ, remember, all these companies trade together, they have a tendency, all, like they say, uh, rising tide lifts all boats, you could see Google basically have a nice rip up. Now, if it has a rip up, where would I be looking to possibly get out and look to for resistance or looking for those pullbacks when they come? Uh, naturally, it'd probably be this zone right here that we are sitting in now, just because you're going to create previous price structure there on the push up if you get a push up keyword if. Um, next, where I'd be looking to take profits, basically that 110, 109 region, definitely going to be an area that I may be trimming my position. And then further up, going up into the 115s, 110s, 
then that's where I start to maybe look to trim. And once we get to that 118, you're going to be thoroughly in the reversal zone. MACD, similarly to Microsoft, how I mentioned, is probably going to form that divergence where you're basically going to, if this thing lets me draw it, you're going to have a line like this. MACD is going to come up on this next push and you may form a divergence. If you don't, which I would be pretty surprised, then I would say that you most likely will continue higher. However, I do have my overarching theory on the market that basically you got one last good push coming to where you trap everyone to send it down lower. But you know, that's just my own theory right now. It hasn't played out. For Google, I'd definitely be taking profits in that 115 region, and then I'd be looking to see where it may come back down. The concerns I have for Google pushing upwards is basically one this macd on the weekly is trying to pinch towards one another and with the current share price and the closed share price basically being right where we were i definitely could see us invalidating the crossover of this macd and pushing up higher but the grim reaper is going to come for the company soon and when i say grim reaper i mean the downturn in it so i'm not saying the company got bankrupt or anything but i'm seeing a slowing of movement upward so you basically flagged out you could push up higher definitely could push up into that like i was saying 115 and if you really get up into that area you have the potential for the 120s but i do think you're gonna have a pullback soon on the weekly basis just because you've been steadily going upwards you're making higher highs and lower lows which is always productive on the weekly chart right now you are basically going to try to break out of this region but you're not really clear for google's takeoff until you get above one uh, the 110 region just because that's going to be your previous resistance point just you have to look at the two week look back as i call it you look at the current week that gives you your breakout period and then you look at the two week look back which is that 110 is where we have to clear in order to basically get a bigger run to the upside and that unrun to upside you could be 115 118 120 who knows we would have to see once the price got there but overall on the daily that's where i'd be looking for a resistance point 118 i definitely think google can push up that way especially with the sentiment in the entire market and how it's basically trading and this is a gigantic coil where a lot of volume got built up but also based on seasonality of the market you may is kind of that where people things start getting bare so maybe we just go sideways you know the sideways could be the new up um in the short term or bullishness so you just have to manage your risk look for that pullback because you know every company is gonna have pullbacks and google and microsoft and all these other companies are no exception they're gonna have pullbacks and like we talked about in the beginning of the stream with frc if that domino falls, I don't think any tech company is immune to the repercussions across the broader market. However, you may be looking at pullbacks as an opportunity to get in because Google, like we covered with the fundamental calculator, is at an extremely good value as of now. So that's what I got for Google on the technical side. And um, yeah, guys, I think that will pretty much just do it in regards to Google. Um, again, it's a beast of a company. I actually... Full disclosure, I actually bought my first shares of Google. I only bought like two of them when I think they were, I forgot the share price. I think it was like 99 or like $98. So did they buy at the all-time lows? Nonetheless though, I do have my first non-dividend paying company. Hopefully if it falls again down to sub 100, yeah, I'm gonna be loading up. I'm gonna be loading up uh, so that way I can sell some covered calls on it. So it's pretty much gonna be my game when it comes to that. Uh, aside from that, I think that'll pretty much just do it. And uh, yeah, liked if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help her with the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow us on the YouTube sites. Link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out. We'll see you all next time.